19-year-old Irishman George Dockrell bowled Somerset to a remarkable five-wicket win with a day to spare against Durham. The maximum points accrued, sending the West Countryman to the top of the LV County Championship First Division table. There was nothing to really separate the two sides at the start of day three, with Somerset still batting in their first innings and looking to get a slender lead. Peter Trigo, who resumed his innings on 67, hit a few lusty blows to do just that. He was out for 89 with that lead standing on just five. Jamie Harrison claiming his fourth wicket on an impressive debut. Once Somerset reached 400 to secure maximum bonus points, James Hildreth declared. Somerset, who'd been 209 for six at one point, went out to field with a lead of 16, which was soon knocked off. Michael De Venuto smashed the first ball of Durham's second knock for six. He and Will Smith had opened up with a stand of 158 on the first day, and they were soon looking good again. There wasn't a single sign of the events that were to come later in the day, as this pair put on 36 this time. De Venuto had made 26 of those, but was then caught by Hildreth in the slips to give Jamie Overton a wicket to celebrate just finishing his exams. Somerset had declared to try to make the most of the conditions. A mist had come in from the west coast, but it didn't seem to help the bowlers too much, and Mark Stoneman and Smith were able to add a steady 33 for the second wicket. The first real sign that Durham might have a bad day came 15 minutes after lunch. Three wickets fell without a run being added. Ben Stokes going between Stoneman and Smith for a duck as he nicked Craig Overton to Alex Barrow at third slip. Now Durham are on 69 for four and it could have been even worse for them had Paul Collingwood not been put down when he was on only five. Instead, the mad few minutes of earlier were put to bed by Collingwood and Ian Blackwell. Collingwood looked as if he was going to kickstart his season by taking three fours off and over from Jamie Overton while Blackwell tried to prevent Dockrell from settling in by hitting him for a six, the kind of shot he played a lot at this ground as a Somerset man. This pair added 62, but then, incredibly, Durham lost four more wickets without scoring a single run, all four going to Dockrell. Blackwell had made 38 when he lobbed a simple return catch. Phil Mustard followed in Dockrell's next over for a duck, Barrow with a catch under the helmet. Two balls later, Liam Plunkett also went for naught, driving Dockrell to Craig Overton, who took the catch above his head. And Durham had gone from the safety of 131 for four to 131 for eight, when Callum Thorpe also departed for a blob. Jamie Overton gifted the catch this time. Dockrell had taken four for naught in ten balls to change the complexion of this match completely. The visitors now relied on Collingwood and for the second time in his knock, he hit three fours in one over as he decided to take on Dockrell. But not even he could deny the Irishman who'd already bowled his side to a win with six wickets against Middlesex on this ground earlier in the season. His fifth this time came when Collingwood edged a slog sweep to slip to go for 32. More turn and bounce from the exceptional Dockrell than did for Harrison. The spinner had taken six for 29, his second best effort of a very impressive season, as Durham had been shot out for just 167 in 50 overs. Not that Somerset made easy work of their target of 152. Barrow was out first ball, leg before to an overjoyed Harrison. Mustard hoped to benefit from the turning pitch and open the bowling with Blackwell, who then did enough to have Nick Compton taken by Collingwood. Compton got only eight of the 67 runs he needed to make a thousand first-class runs before the end of the month. So Somerset were on 17 for two and probably feeling a little nervous. Well, Aral Sapaya clearly wasn't. He drilled Blackwell over long on for one six and then swept him for an even better one as he raced away, determined to chase down the runs in order to get a day off. Blackwell was simply unable to get the control which Dockrell had had and much of that was to do with Sapaya. A fifth four to go with three sixes took it to a very entertaining half century of 72 balls. It was the innings which was to ensure that Somerset raced to their victory rather than go about the chase in a nervous fashion. Hildreth, as he'd done in the first innings, played plenty of fine shots, although he wasn't quite as destructive. A tennis shot ended his knock on 31 as he lobbed a short ball from Steve Harmison to Thorpe to put Somerset on 100 for three, 52 runs away from their target. 
Zapaya was possibly on course to smash a hundred to take his side over the line. This pull off Smith brought him his fourth maximum. But on 73, he was legged before to the part-time spinner Smith as he tried to pull into the boundary again. It was only the ninth first-class wicket of Smith's career. Joss Butler then completed a disappointing return from injury. Having made naught in the first innings, he was out for seven in the second, slicing Blackwell to Harmison. That left Somerset five down with just 14 needed, and the man who dragged his side back into this game on the second day, Trigo, was there at the end. Craig Keyes were to finish the match off by hitting a delivery from Smith so far, the ball probably won't come down to earth until next week. Somerset had reached their target of 152 in only 33 and a half overs to win with a day to spare. The 24 points Somerset collected puts them on top of the table for now, a point ahead of Warwickshire who may still get no more from their match against Surrey. Indeed, Somerset became the first team this season to earn maximum points in a game. Durham are still awaiting their first win and took seven points here. They must be wondering how they lost so quickly, having been 232 for one on the first day.